here's what I want to do. I want to give you some uh, ways to think about productivity that you might not be thinking about right now. Because the fact of the matter is, when I hear the word productivity, I don't want you to think about plowing through a to-do list. Because part of the reason why you don't feel productive is because you're busy doing the things that aren't important to you. Yeah, do you need to make sure you have milk or you got almond milk or oat milk in the fridge? Of course you do. But have you ever noticed that all the busy crap in life uh, tends to take care of itself? That you don't really need to focus your time and energy on the minutia that's on your to-do list because that stuff tends to grab your attention? What you really need to do is figure out how to create time and how to create the focus that you need in order to feel like you are making progress on the important things. And that's really what productivity means to me. You get all kinds of stuff done. You're really busy in your life, aren't you? But are you getting progress made on the important things? Probably not because that's the challenge for most of us. And so first things first, when it comes to trying to have a breakthrough in productivity, you need a game plan. You need to have a very short list every week of what actually matters to you, okay? Because I guarantee you, if you were to do an audit of the way that you spend your time this week, you would probably see that 95% of your time is spent on things that you really don't care about. And even more scary, I bet you don't even realize how much time you are wasting just mindlessly scrolling through social media or sitting on the couch with the TV on, also answering emails. That is the least productive way to spend your time. Multitasking, spending your time just sort of zoning out on things that don't matter. What I want you to do is I want you right now to think about what is it between now and the end of this week, for example, what is it that matters to you? What's the most important thing that you would love to make progress on that you never seem to find the time, okay? It's a whole nother conversation for us to talk about whether or not you actually have time because the fact is you do have time. You have plenty of time to make small amount of progress every single day on what matters to you. What you do not have right now is you do not have a plan for prioritizing. What's the one thing that you want to make progress on that you want to find some time to be productive on? Because productivity, everybody, true productivity is not plowing through a to-do list on shit that doesn't matter. True productivity is making progress on something that matters to you because that's going to make you feel like you own your life again. That's going to make you feel like you're putting yourself first. And these projects, everybody, you don't have to get them done this weekend. You just need to identify, make a plan for what's the most important thing. I want to get my sister's SSI paperwork completed for her. I would love to spend more time with my son. I would love to work on my YouTube channel. Amazing. Amazing, everybody. I would love to remember to high five myself in the morning I see somebody. I'd love to spend time on my job search. Right now, all we're doing in order to have a breakthrough in productivity, step number one, is to identify one thing that you want to make progress on by the end of the week. That's it. Could be today, could be this weekend. Just identify the one thing you want to make progress on that matters to you, that you never seem to have time on. For me, I really want to spend time with my son. And what does that mean? That means I got to be intentional about carving out time to be with him. And so we're going to go skiing together this weekend in Vermont. And I have to take the step to organize the time because just going up and being with him for the weekend, that isn't going to lead to quality time together, right? It's going to leave me in his presence and him in my presence, but 
He'll probably want to spend time with his friends. He'll probably want to spend time with his girlfriend. I'll be busy doing other things. And so you really need to identify what is it that matters to you that you want to prioritize and make progress on. That's step number one, everybody. Um, because if you don't actually make a game plan, it's sort of like a football team that's playing and they score in the wrong end zone. You need to know what is it that matters to you because you can be busy as hell, you can be productive as hell on all the wrong shit and then literally it's like scoring in the wrong end zone because you were not focused on the goal that mattered to you. Okay, great. So I see so many people writing down what they want and I also see people going, I'm so bad at organizing my time. No, you're not. You're terrible at figuring out and identifying what matters to you. Because the fact is, everybody, based on research, if you end every week feeling like you made progress on one thing, just one thing that matters, and notice I said progress, not that you got it done, that you just spent some time and you just pushed yourself forward a little bit, if you, based on the research, end every week going, wow, I made a little bit of progress on something that mattered to me, the book I want to write, the YouTube channel I'm trying to start, the job search I'd like to do, researching trauma patterns in relationships so that I can show up better in my relationships, uh, finding a therapist, spending time doing that. Whatever it is that is the most important project for you personally, identify. Step number one. Number two, focus on progress. So part of the reason why you don't feel productive is because you're trying to complete everything. And so let's take one of the things that I saw somebody write, that you want to uh, clean up one of the spare rooms in your apartment or in your house, that maybe there's a spare bedroom and you have been wanting to turn it into a home office, or maybe one of the kids has moved out of the house and you want to declutter that room, like at a project around organizing. Maybe it's something in your garage or your basement. Or, hey, here's one for me. Uh, our daughter moved out and started her life, uh, you know, post-college. And our other daughter is uh, out in Los Angeles going to college. And we, no joke, have three garbage bags full of clothes that somebody needs to go through to figure out what needs to be donated, what could you actually sell because it still has tags on it. And it has been sitting there for two months. So maybe you have a pile of that kind of stuff in your house. This is not a priority for me. I'm perfectly fine with it sitting in the room where our laundry is. The priority for me this week is to carve out dedicated time to hang out with our 16 year old son and do something fun together. Because we spend a lot of time together but we don't get intentional about doing something specific. But if you want to declutter, for example, here's where we all go wrong. You identify what you want to do, and then you think you got to get it done. In order for me to go through two bags of clothing, for example, in order for you to clear out your garage, that could take you two days to do it the right way, right? Because, you know, if you don't give yourself enough time, then you're going to piles, and so then you think, I can't get it done, and so then you never schedule it, right? Okay. We're not going to worry about completion, everybody. We're going to worry about progress. So when you think about things in terms of progress, it can shrink the amount of time that you need. Maybe all that you're going to do is you're going to work on one dresser in the room, or you're going to work on one shelving unit in the garage. And by simply making the time to, number one, identify what matters to you, and number two, identify what meaningful progress could look like. You will now shrink the amount of time, you will define the project, and you can make the time for it. And simply just doing that is going to make you feel more productive based on the research. All right, now let me talk about um, what you need to do. Okay, I literally have notes for this. Oh, there we go. And I just lost it because I really want to make sure that I teach you all this stuff. So, um, here, Becca, can you help me? Because this is not, oh, because my thing is not, never mind. Guys, I am, I am trying, multitasking is not how you be productive. And you are watching me multitask right now. We're going to get into some of the science now. So now that is how you leverage something called the progress principle. Okay, the progress principle is really important when it comes to productivity. This is a concept that I first learned about in the Harvard Business Review. So if it's in the Harvard Business Review, everybody, very fancy. 
must be accurate, right, if it's coming from Harvard. Well, the progress principle is a study that uh, comes from a study where researchers looked at, I believe it was 14,000 work journals. And what they found after looking at the work journals of how people spent their time, 14,000 people, is that at the end of the week, the people that felt like they had been the most productive and the people who felt the most fulfilled by their work week were the people who simply made progress on something that mattered. And so by you identifying what matters to you this week and by you identifying a way that you can make a small amount of progress on it, you are leveraging this research from Harvard Business Review about what creates productivity and meaning and fulfillment in your life. And that's making progress on something that matters. Now that I've introduced you to the progress principle, I want to unpack some of the science around productivity, okay? So that you can also bring what research says about what productive people do to leverage brain power to be more productive. Ready? Everybody ready? Okay, good. So here's a couple concepts that I want you to think about. First, we're going to talk about globally how I want you to think about being able to focus your attention and get things done. Okay. And this is on a day to day basis. First of all, when I talk about productivity and the ability to focus your attention on a day to day basis, I want you to understand a simple fact. In order to get things done, in order to direct your focus and move through a task, you are going to require some brain power. And so I want you to think about your brain like a, a car engine, right? And a car engine is what you need uh, in a car to power you forward. And your brain is like an engine that will power you forward to help you get tasks done. Now, an engine requires fuel, right? And sure enough, your brain has a certain amount of fuel. So imagine that you got like a tank that has fuel in it, in your brain, okay? And as you wake up and as you go through your day and as you direct your attention on things, guess what happens to that fuel in your brain? It starts to drain. And so I want you to know this because the tactics and the tools that I'm about to teach you relate to the fuel in your brain and what times of day you have the most fuel, what times of day you are more likely to be able to focus, okay? And what do you think, everybody, is the best time of day for your brain and for the amount of fuel that you have in your brain naturally in order to be able to tap into it and drive your focus at something that's important to you? I love this. You guys are right. Laura says, my brain is mush by the end of the day. Everybody's saying morning, morning, morning. I see somebody saying, I feel like I'm on empty. This is a really good analogy because there are times where you feel like your brain is full of gas and you're able to direct your attention and focus. And then there are times where you're like, Jesus, I feel like I'm running on empty. I'm running on fumes here. And you're absolutely right, everybody. It is mornings. When you wake up, generally what the research shows is that your brain is primed to be able to focus for the first four hours of the day. The first four hours of the day tend to be, for most of us, the time of day when your brain has the most fuel and when your speed of processing is awesome and when you are able to direct your attention at what you need to be focused on, okay? So now there's a caveat to this. You can manufacture boosts of productivity and boosts of feeling like you've got a little bit more brain power Number one, immediately after you exercise. So if you have a burst of cardio, 30 minutes is what a lot of the research says. But if you have a burst of cardio, you will get a little bit of increase in fuel. Another thing that helps is getting outside. Getting outside 
uh, when you start to feel your energy and your focus start to go to empty, getting outside is another way to give yourself a boost of brain power. But generally speaking, everybody, you need to start to marry mornings with peak productivity, okay? This is true for most of us. There will be some of you that are like, I don't know what you're talking about, Mel Robbins, because I feel like my brain is full at the end of the day. If that's you, because I see some of you going, well, that's nighttime for me. You got to run with that and you got to save the most important stuff for those moments where naturally you feel like you've got the energy and you got the fuel in the tank to be able to focus. So kind of like, you know, you think, what do you think of when I say the word salt? You think of pepper. What do you say? What do you think of when I say the word peanut butter? You probably think of jelly. When I say the word productivity and focus, for most of us, I want you to start thinking morning. And here's why that's important. The reason why that's important is because if you can own your mornings, if you can put that thing that matters to you first thing in the morning and make a little bit of progress on it, you are going to start to feel like you are more in control. You're going to start to see yourself using your best brain power and your highest level of fuel at the thing that matters most to you. So that's a little tip for you about productivity. Try to attack the thing that matters to you first thing in the morning, before you jump on your phone, before you answer emails, before you start attacking a to-do list that's full of shit you don't really care about, before you look at social media. Direct your brain when your fuel level is high and your focus is clear at the thing that matters to you. <clears throat> and it's not just because it makes sense that you would want to do this. I mean, the second you look at email, your stress level goes through the roof, your attention gets hijacked. But it's also because based on research, literally, your, your margin for error increases. You know, they did this research with anesthesiologists. And do you know that the number of errors increase as the day goes on? The number of errors that we see in hospitals increase almost three times from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., hand washing decreases in hospitals. And that also relates to problems in the day. Now, look, the margin of error is very small. But what happens as you go through your day, particularly if you're not getting outside to increase the fuel in your brain and kind of reset your ability to focus, particularly if you're not introducing cardio, which also uh, increases the fuel in the brain and helps you focus, is that your ability to maintain concentration as your fuel level decreases and your brain power decreases and the distractions increase and the number of things that you're trying to remember increase, your ability to laser focus decreases. That's why, that's why mornings matter everybody when it comes to focus and when it comes to human error, when it comes to distraction, this isn't just research, this is common sense. And, you know, this is not to slight anybody that is working in a hospital because those folks are angels, particularly after this pandemic, and the margin of error is puny. But when we look at even a puny margin of error over the course of, of a day and of the decrease in brain power and the increase in information that your brain is absorbing, geez louise, it does increase 3x. So you want to prioritize what's important to you first thing in the morning. And you know how I feel about the phone, everybody. Do not look at that damn thing until you have literally figured out what matters to you and you've made a little bit of progress. Now, to end, I want to give you two other really cool tips based on science uh, that is going to help you with something that is also a problem right now when it comes to productivity. I believe that right now, the single biggest barrier to you being able to focus on what matters to you is Zoom fatigue. Seriously, you are online all day. You're probably on video conference calls all day. Give me a heart or a hand in the comments, everybody. If you're like, I can't get work done because I'm always on freaking video conference calls all day. 
okay? I can't get anything done. I feel like I am a Zoom zombie at this point. How many of you feel like that? Like, holy smokes, I'm a Zoom zombie at this point. The number one thing that is zapping your ability to focus and to concentrate is video conference calls and being online all day. And let me tell you why. There are two reasons why this parade of Zoom meetings that you're on all day is killing your ability to focus on what's important. Number one, when you stare at a screen, your eyeballs, like if I'm staring at a screen, my eyeballs have to focus. Like they're literally focusing on something right in front of my face. And when you have to focus on something really in front of your face, it drains your mental fuel and it makes you feel tired. And so it is critical that you step away from the computer at least every 45 minutes, everybody. So every 45 minutes, what the research suggests is you need to step away from the computer or the phone or get off that Zoom conference and step outside, number one, even just open up a freaking window if you're in your apartment and look and like get the fresh air. And second thing you need to do is stare off into the horizon. Allow your eyeballs, like it's almost like they're twisted super tight when you have to focus something that's right here. When you step outside and you stare off at the horizon for just five minutes, it's like your eyeballs untwist, your brain relaxes, the fuel picks up a little bit, and that's a simple trick that's going to help you uh, with the fatigue that being online all day is causing. The second tip that's going to help you with focus, everybody, turn off your frigging camera. Sure, start the meeting, say hi to everybody, and then it is okay to say, hey, everybody, I'm going to turn off my camera because I, I, I really feel like I concentrate better. And here's the truth. The truth is you will concentrate better because if you stare at yourself on camera all day, this part of your brain, your prefrontal cortex engages and it's hard for you to drift into kind of autopilot. If you and I are in a meeting, you're drifting in and out of paying attention because you are able to absorb information through all five senses. When you're in this two-dimensional space and you have to stare at your own face, this part of your brain engages and it drains fuel faster. That's one of the reasons why Zoom fatigue is real. Zoom fatigue is draining your focus because number one, your eyes are having to really focus. It's like they're twisting really tight because you're right close up. Number two, you're staring at yourself half the time, which makes this part of your brain, your prefrontal cortex, pay attention, and that drains your fuel faster. So the quick fix is turn off your camera. You are allowed to do that. You are adults here. Just tell people, I'm just going to turn off my camera because that way I notice I don't get a headache and I'm able to concentrate more. And every 45 minutes, step outside, take a deep breath, with the fresh air, let the nature make your senses come alive, and for five minutes, just stare off into the horizon. And here's one other final tip. It is perfectly acceptable, particularly in this hybrid environment, for you to take your calls, especially if you're able to turn your camera off, outside while you're walking. If you're moving while you're listening to a conference call, your fuel level is going to rise. Your heartbeat is going to go up. The outdoors is going to activate your senses. And it's a way for you to increase your focus and also be working. There you go. Three simple tips to combat Zoom fatigue, to increase the fuel and your ability to focus in your brain. All of this stuff is research back tools that uh, you can use immediately in order to be more productive. I have a morning routine. It does not involve sitting in an infrared sauna or drinking mushroom tea or spending two hours in class or spending 45 minutes meditating. And the reason why my routine does not look like that is because I have three children, a business to run, and I don't have time for that. So my routine is something that's very simple that is backed by science. And the mornings that I do my routine, my whole life falls into because I've started my running off in control. Now, what I want to talk to you this morning about
about a challenge that I'm issuing to you. You ready for the challenge? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready for the challenge. This is a challenge that I want you to take on uh, as you are thinking about your own routine. And routines are super important for your mental health. It is Mental Health Awareness Month. One of the reasons why we're doing Spring It On with Mel Robbins is because decluttering your mind, detoxing your friendships, refreshing your routines, and boosting your belief in self, those are four powerful things that bolster and empower your mental health, that make you feel more confident and in control. And your morning routine is super important when it comes to starting your day right, when it comes to thinking positive thoughts. your mental health and whether or not you feel in control. And that's why I'm going to issue you this challenge. Tomorrow morning, and for those of you that become a morning person. You just have to get your ass out of bed, okay, and get going. Uh, that's how you run your life. That's how you make your dreams happen, and that's how you take control of your mental health. Let me tell you something. Tomorrow morning, I want you to take the snooze alarm challenge, and I want you to see what impact it has on your mental health. It is Mental Health Awareness Month. You're going to set your alarm tonight. When that alarm goes off tomorrow morning, you're gonna use my five second rule, five, four, three, two, one, to silence the excuses, to interrupt the habit of hitting the snooze button, to stop yourself from doing what I used to do. I used to be one of those people that would lay in bed in the morning when the alarm would go off and I would start thinking about my day and my to-do list and my problems and everything that stressed me out. And as I would lie there <coughs> thinking about these things, you know what had happened? They'd get louder and heavier and you okay honey you're good you need some water you're turning bright red you're good give everybody the thumbs up can stop okay, worrying about you okay she's good she's good excellent and we're at a red light so that was a perfectly timed cough so I but as I would lie in bed and think about my problems they would get worse I was putting myself in a negative state of mind I want you to hear that alarm and push yourself out of bed. Do the challenge, which means get out of bed in five seconds when the alarm rings because it will put you in a positive state of mind. What happens if you hit the snooze button? You drift back to sleep. And then two things happen. You want to know what happens? Number one, you wake up late. You wake up late and behind. Guess what that does to your mental health? It puts you in a negative state of mind. <coughs> and you also, by the way, blew off the alarm, which means you started your day by breaking a commitment to yourself by not getting out of bed. The other thing that you do, and I explain all this in the five second rule book, I explain it in videos all over the internet. When you hit the snooze button and drift back to sleep for 15 or 20 minutes, you know what happens? Your brain drifts into a state called sleep inertia, which means your brain goes back to sleep. When you then wake up again 15 minutes later and interrupt that deep sleep state, you're now in a state called sleep inertia, which impacts your brain's ability to process information, to remember information. Basically, you're in a fog for four hours. So you've also negatively impacted your mental health. So what I want you to do tonight is I want you to set your alarm and I want you to accept the snooze alarm challenge. How many of you are gonna do this? Give me a thumbs up, give me a wave, tell me where you're watching from and let me know that yes, Mel Robbins, I am going to spring it on with my life. I'm gonna reset my routine and I'm gonna go back to something basic that has not only powerful science behind it, but it will positively impact my mental health. That is, I'm gonna accept the snooze alarm challenge. I'm gonna set my alarm tomorrow morning when that alarm goes off, I'm gonna five, four, three, two, one, use the five second rule, and I'm gonna get my rear end out of bed. That's all I want you to do today. 
that's it. Because I know you've got a bazillion other things going on, and I feel like if I overwhelm you with too much, you'll do nothing. You're gonna be just like me. So today, when the alarm went off, I did not wanna get out of bed. And you wanna know why? I did not wanna get out of bed because I had incontinence testing today. This is a map of a surgery I'm having on Monday. The alarm woke up and I immediately realized, oh my God, today is the day that I've gotta to go to the gyno urocologist and I've got to get testing to see how much I leak. And it turns out, I leak a lot. So I had all kinds of catheters in my future and I had all kinds of probes that were gonna happen and I'm a little nervous about this surgery, although I feel a lot better. So as I woke up this morning, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to hit that snooze button. I wanted to lay there and think about what I was worried about or all the things I needed to do. And instead, I do what I do every morning. I don't feel like getting out of bed. Honestly, I'd prefer to lay there and wallow because it's a habit sometimes. But I always, five, four, three, two, one, force myself to get up because I know it's the best thing that I can do for my mental health. And I know that laying there in bed and worrying about the testing that I needed to have done isn't going to make the testing better. It's gonna make it worse because it's going to build it up in my mind to some big nasty thing and I'm gonna walk in there anxious. Well, guess what? We're on our way back from the testing. The testing went well. I have extreme stress incontinence, which means hopefully insurance is paying for this sucker. Um, and we'll be taking you behind the scenes because 50% of women have incontinence issues. And I'm not the least bit embarrassed by the fact that I have this. I'm annoyed, which is why I'm getting it fixed after two decades of struggling with this. I digress. You know, I have this saying that I love, and this is what I'm going to leave you with. If the problem you're facing can be solved with action, you don't have a problem. Let me say that again. If the problem that you're facing, you don't have a job, you're struggling with alcoholism, you're single and you're embarrassed by it, you leak like I do, you don't have the amount of money you wish you had, you doubt yourself. If you have a problem that can be solved by action, and there are very few of them that can't be solved by action, you, my friend, do not have a problem. You got that? Now, today we are building on your morning routine. We have already covered in week one, default versus deliberate thinking. We have already covered, this is driving me nuts, this little line here. I think that's a little bit better. We've already cut, oh, see, I'm, I'm sorry. For those of you on Instagram, you can't see that there's like a lightsaber going through my face on the Facebook broadcast, but whatever. Um, if I get closer, maybe that'll work because it is driving me bananas. <laughs> this is what it like. This is what it's like to live with ADD. Um, we have already covered deliberate versus default thinking. We've covered the science of visualization. We've talked about how to spot limiting beliefs and how to become the kind of person that when you notice that you're thinking this and it doesn't serve you, that you deliberately think that something that is positive, that is a story about you. I want to tell you something. Um, just this morning, I was talking to one of my favorite people. And she has the exact same story that I used to have, that she's a bad person. And so consequently, she sees evidence all over the place for where she's bad. And she's going through this big breakup right now. And the person that she is breaking up with, basically, while the breakup process was happening, she bas he basically said to her, in a number of different ways, you're a bad person. Push the button. Push the button. Push the button. Push the button. We all have buttons that anybody or anything can push. And that's why it's so important if you have limiting beliefs from your past that you change them. Because if you tell yourself that you're a bad person, you will see evidence that you are. And more importantly, you will also start to act consistently with a bad person. <clears throat> and here's the truth, you're not a bad person. My friend is an amazing person, I'm an amazing person. And so it is critical for you to take control of your life and of your thinking. And it starts with the story that you say about yourself. And so we were talking this morning about how in this next chapter post breakup, the most important thing to go forward with is the belief and the deliberate thinking that you are a good person. Look for all the good things that you do. Look for the people that are around you that do love you deeply. Look at how compassionate you are. Look at the little changes that you're making. Look at the little wins all day. Look at how helpful you are. 
find the evidence and it's going to make it easier and easier and easier for you to continue to be deliberate about what you're thinking about. So we've already covered all this. You can go back and review all the videos on our YouTube channel or our Facebook page anytime that you want. Anybody can sign up for this, melrobbins.com slash mindset reset. I want to give some shout outs to some people because I cannot believe how many people are changing their lives. Let me stop that. I actually can believe. I can believe how many of you are changing your lives. And here's why. It took me about 45 years to really seriously start to go to work on how I think, to dismantle the limiting beliefs that I have. And when I did, it was such a profound, game-changing level of personal development for me that I know personally how it can shift the ground that you're standing on when you shift the thoughts that you're thinking. And so I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that if you're actually trying the micro things that I'm telling you to do every single day that are building, not only on decades of science and research, but they're building every day on one another. We started out with thinking habits and now right now you're in the middle of a training about your morning routine. And I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get to that in a minute. But when you make these tiny changes, particularly about how you think, it will change everything about your life because you don't realize it. But we walk through life with a filter and that filter has been programmed by the stories that you tell yourself. And the filter reinforces the stories because that filter that you see the world through, wouldn't it be nice if we just saw the world through glitter? This filter that you have, if it's negative about yourself, you're only going to see negative things and you're only going to have negative things come in. And when nice things happen to you, you're not going to believe that you deserve it. So it's essential that we identify the filter that you see the world through and we remove it. And we put something that's clear and that's amplifying and that's positive in its place. And one of the things that's really important in addition to the mental habits is your morning routine. And the reason why your morning routine is so important is because it's the start of your day. If you wake up and think crappy thoughts, you are setting the table to have that continue. And so I am training you to take control of your morning and it begins with what you do as soon as you wake up. We've already covered why you should leave your phone in the outside of your bedroom at night. We've already covered the science behind why when the alarm gets up, you need to get up. You should not hit the snooze button because it puts you in a, a neurological state called sleep inertia that impacts your focus, your happiness, your mood. We have also talked about the fact that your dreams are worth 10 minutes. I actually think they're worth an hour, but most of us only have 10 minutes before the chaos begins. So I want you to find 10 lousy minutes for your dreams every morning. So after you turn off your alarm, you get out of bed, do not look at your phone, you go straight to a spot and you take this little template that we gave you for free. Just go to melrobbins.com slash mindset reset. You can also find this by the way at five secondjournal.com. So on the website five, the number five secondjournal.com, you will find not only this downloadable template, but you're gonna find a ton of videos about the science behind uh, the journaling method I use, the science and research, uh, that's very recent about productivity. And today we're going to talk about my most favorite piece of research, and that comes from Harvard Business School, and it's called the Progress Principle. So I'm going to walk you through my journaling method. This is the one that I did today. Um, oh, you can't see it on Instagram. Hold on a second. There we go. And so today, today in my journal, first of all, we covered this yesterday, really important for you to start with assessing your mood. And the reason why we want you to assess your mood is because research proves that your mood first thing in the morning impacts your level of productivity, your sense of focus, and your happiness all day long. So super important as a mindfulness act to wake up and tune in and ask yourself, well, how am I feeling? Am I depleted or am I energized? In yesterday's video, I shared that I kind of circled this near the depleted in, the meh kind of end because somebody had kept me awake in the hotel all night. Well, today I'm really good. And the reason why, I, why I'm really good, and this is probably too much information, is because I'd been kind of backed up after our uh, holiday trip to Tanzania, if you know what I mean. And so yesterday, the train finally got moving again. And so I feel really good. <laughs> 
but I'm also home so I can cook dinner for the family and I was able to drop off my son and pick up my son and that just makes me feel really, really good. Um, to feel even more energized, I went to yoga class today. Um, and so this is what we covered in yesterday's video, but I'm just showing you. These questions take five seconds. And if you learn how to tune in, to read your energy, and then to think of one thing you could do to boost it. By boosting your mood, you're going to boost your focus, you're going to boost your productivity, you're going to boost your sense of control. It's pretty amazing. The next thing we're going to talk about is this puppy right here. This is the most powerful part of the five-second journal. And again, don't buy it. You don't need to. We emailed you free templates that you can use. You don't ever need to buy this thing. You can just do this in a journal somewhere. You can do this in your own journal. You can do this in a notebook. You can do this in your head. Whatever you want. Um, this is the progress principle. This sucker right here has changed my life. And it, it helps me be a wildly successful woman. Um, you know, we're launching a brand new daytime talk show that's going to have a staff of 70 people and it's 175 shows a year. My business partners, Mandy and Chris and I run a media company in Boston. We have a project launching with Audible Originals on February 7th. We put out videos every single day on social media. We are engaging with more than a million people a day on social media. Uh, on top of that, we have a ton of, you know, I'm delivering 47 speeches between now and the end of May, and I'm still married after 23 years, and my kids talk to me. So I think I'm doing pretty good. And part of it is because I've learned to leverage the progress principle. I don't try to get everything done. Every morning after I assess my mood, based on research from Harvard Business School, I leverage something called the progress principle. And this is what the progress principle states. The people that feel the most productive and the most satisfied with their work are people who make meaningful progress on something that matters to them. That's it. That's it. They're not the people that get 155,000 things done. The progress principle states that if you make little progress every single day, just incremental steps forward on something that matters to you, you will be more productive, You'll be more satisfied, you'll be happier, you'll be more fulfilled, you'll be more present. And I got to tell you, based on personal experience, this has been a game changer for me. So today, my top project, this is my top project. Brace yourself, because it's not that, that ground shaking. My top project today was simply to brain dump in one place all the loose things that I want to make sure are getting done in our company. That's it. All the projects that I just, that, that's it. That was just the top project that popped into my mind. Then you're going to say this project matters to me. Why? Well, it matters to me because it stresses me out when I feel like there are loose ends to things and when I feel like I don't know what's happening. And so I need to do this for me. What's one small action I can do to move forward? One small action. You want to see how incremental this is. The only action that I committed to taking today based on the progress principle was to carry my five second journal around so that I could use the other side to brain dump the things that I want to make sure that I'm capturing so I can go over um, this list with the team. That's it. That's it. And I've been brain dumping things as they come up. And there's not as many loose ends as I like manifest in my head. But the good news is I'm making progress. I feel accomplished. I feel satisfied. And so will you. So all I want you to do today is I want you to continue everything that we've talked about. The, the kind of training part is over. We're trying to keep these training modules around 10 to 15 minutes. So the training part's over. Out of service to you, let me do a recap of what I want you to do today. And then I'm going to do some shout outs and I'm going to answer a few questions. So by way of recap, what is your assignment? Well, your assignment always and forever from this point forward, when you do a mindset reset, it's not an event, it's a process. It's something you practice all day long. The moment you notice that your thoughts are drifting to something that's not serving you, you're going to get deliberate and you're going to direct your thoughts to something that are positive. That's something you're going to do all day long. Visualization, also something that's super important. At the beginning of January, we covered the science of visualization. This is one of the most important videos I've ever done because I explain the reason why visualization works and I also explain the two-step method for how to visualize based on science. 
So if you haven't watched that, go to January 1st or January 2nd, find the video, watch it, look through your emails. It's all there. Um, but practice visualization. Now, the way you set yourself up for your morning routine, because that's what we're covering yesterday, today, and on the 11th day, we're going to do the final two prompts in the, my, the morning routine that I do. Tonight, I want you to plug your phone in outside your bedroom. You're going to turn off all the alerts. You're going to leave the ringer on, and you're going to set your alarm. You're going to go to bed. When the alarm goes off, no snooze button. Get up, turn off the alarm, and then go take those first 10 minutes of the day, and you use them to create a powerful morning routine to help you get focused, to help you think positive things, to help you identify your priorities, and to help you make progress on your dreams, something that matters to you. I invite you to use the one that we emailed to you, the five second journal method. You're gonna assess your mood and you're gonna do the progress principle. You can also move down to the other final prompts. I'll be explaining those in tomorrow's training. If you want to include visualization in your morning routine tomorrow, fantastic. If you have time to do a little micro exercise, fantastic. If you want to add in something else like five deep breaths or go walk the dog in the woods, whatever, whatever works for you, because if it works for you, you'll do it. Okay. I'm trying to get you to become more deliberate about the way you're waking up and what you're thinking about and how you start your day so that you can figure out the best way that works for you. One of the things that I learned in researching the book, The High Five Habit, which was freaking news to me, Chase. But once you have somebody unpack it, you're like, oh, shit. Well, that <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Um, it is research from a woman who was at UCLA for a long time, one of the leading neuroscientists in the world. She studies the brain and what it takes for the brain to learn, to change, to create. And one of the things that she discovered is the connection between your nervous system and your brain's ability to function as it's designed. And to just really dumb it down, mostly for myself, um, this is how I've boiled down what she talks about. So your nervous system trumps your brain. And when you are in a state of stress, or anxiety, or uncertainty, and your nervous system gets locked into a fight or flight response, which is what everybody is in. There's no way, I mean, your wife may not be there because she is a expert in meditation, she's a practitioner, so she has uh, daily practices that help her flip off what's called the sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight, anxiety on edge, oh fuck, how am I paying the bills? What's happening in politics? Gas prices are now crazy. When are we getting off Zoom? Are the kids going back to school? Do I have to wear a mask? Do I need a booster? Like all of that shit that you're processing that makes your nervous system fire up like alarm, alarm, alarm. That's your sympathetic nervous system. If you don't switch that sucker off, and flip on the other nervous system. You got two nervous systems, sympathetic, parasympathetic. Parasympathetic is your resting nervous system. It's your grounded, calm. It's the nervous system that's in play when you're in flow, being creative. It's what it feels like when you're grounded in your body and you're okay and you feel okay. And so... What I learned from Dr. Judith Willis is that when your sympathetic fight or flight, oh fuck nervous system is running the show, your brain doesn't work properly because the alarm system takes over. And I can explain this using a very simple example. If all of a sudden the alarms went off in the studio that you're in and you smelled smoke, would you be able to solve a math problem? No. No, <laughs> of course I'm not. out. I'm out. out. Well, that's basically what it's been like for the last two years. The fire alarms are going off and your body, your nose smells smoke. And so your nervous system flips on an alarm. The reason why 
it's so hard to focus. The reason why you're exhausted by one o'clock in the afternoon, the reason why you feel like you're one more thing away from checking yourself in and needing help is because your nervous system is just fried and it's impacting your ability to think clearly. And so there's a simple trick that you can use. And I know you've talked about the vagus nerve a lot on your show. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a really important thing to understand. It's a treasure inside your body. The vagus nerve is a nerve that runs all the way from, you know, your seat through every major organ, your vocal cords, all the way up to the top of your head. And the vagus nerve is the on off switch between your, oh shit, nervous system and your, I got this nervous system. And so a simple thing that you can do and I want everybody to do this at the beginning of their day. And the reason why I want you to do it at the beginning of your day is because I guarantee you, particularly because you're in business for yourself, you're waking up on edge. Your cortisol levels, the stress hormone are the highest first thing in the morning. And so when you wake up and you're already at, on edge feeling like, oh my God, how am I going to get through the day? How am I going to pay my bills? You're rattled, you're thinking, you're worried, your cortisol levels are high. That means your, oh shit, nervous system, your alarm system is already ringing. So we got to flip the switch and turn off the alarm before you start your day so that your brain can focus and work for you. So the way you're going to do this, I call this high-fiving your heart. We're going to press in the center of your body and that's going to kind of right by your heart, it's going to press on your vagus nerve. That's where the on-off switch is. And I'm going to teach you to manually flip the switch and to turn off the alarm system and to turn on the calm, grounded, creative nervous system that's going to help you get back into a state of flow and help you be more strategic because right now is the most extraordinary moment in time for you as a business owner, I believe, and for a creator. So as you're pressing right here, you're just going to take a deep breath. Go ahead. And now I want you to say these three sentences. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm, I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm loved. I'm loved. That's it. And most mornings I need to do it about 23 times. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like what I know, happens, but I just I love that about you though. Like you're like twenty three times. Like <laughs> no exact. Like, <laughs> well, you you know when it's I know when you can stop because you actually have a sensation of the yeah, rattle settling, yeah. and yeah. you come back into your body. And I didn't realize until I learned how to turn off the alarm and turn on that cool rested state that my default for as long as I can remember, Chase, has been alarm mode. That I have been running so fast, mostly away from things, that I did not comprehend just how dysregulated my nervous system was. And, you know, I think it's really challenging for creatives like you and me and everybody listening, you know, and even if you're a small business owner and you don't consider yourself a creative and an artist, your business is your art. And sure. as a, you know, small business owner, you're creating something. I didn't like slowing down is terrifying when you're creative because there can be this manic stressed out energy that's part of the creative process. And so it was very foreign to me during the pandemic to not be able to run somewhere. I mean, I literally could not go to get a cup of coffee or go to catch a flight or run to Target to run an errand, which I didn't realize was how I was kind of managing all of this dysregulated kind of survival mode energy. But learning how to stand in that frenzy, put my hands on my heart and bring myself back into my body so that I could leverage the intense and incredible power of my brain and be strategic instead of reactive 
and be confident instead of like chaotic, it's been life changing. And so I believe that, look, you know, will putting your hands on your heart take away your problems? No, it won't change the circumstances you're dealing with. But what it does is it changes you from the inside out and changes your ability to be calm and to be confident and to be clear minded and intentional about how you face those things. And that changes everything. Everything. Because shit happens. Shit's going to happen. And it's not that we aim to prevent things from happening, but we take control of our response to those things, right? Whether Mm -hmm. this is stoicism or neurology or psychology, all of those things align to say that how we respond is the measure of greatness, right? That is how we become our best self. And For sanity. This is, I mean, I, I yeah. give you an example, Chase. I so we just we've been wrapping up kind of like this big like book tour to the extent you can do one in in these times. And I went over to London, and we had an incredible you know tour over in London. And I took my daughter with me, and it was time to come home. And the regulations for getting any kind of international travel, at least right now at the time that we are filming this, are mind-blowingly complicated. And they're changing in real time. And some involve printouts and others involve apps. And so I found myself at 4.30 in the morning at the airport two days ago with my daughter, and we didn't have the right paperwork. And... As soon as we learned we don't have the right paperwork, as soon as you start to entertain, I'm not getting out of this country, as soon as you learn that, oh my God, am I going to have to quarantine here for 14 days? Then can I get back in the country? Oh my, like, and that whole thing happens when you allow the stress of your life or the stress of a moment or the uncertainty of something or the fear that you feel to all of a sudden surge through your body, you will not be able to solve the problems you're facing. And so literally at 4.30 in the morning at Heathrow, I got my hands on my heart as I'm huffing and puffing because I didn't download the app and I can't get back home and I don't want to stay here for another 14 days. And my daughter started, I'm, I'm okay. I'm safe. I'm left. I'm okay. I'm safe. I'm left. My daughter's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm okay. I'm safe. I'm left. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm, and I bring myself back into my body. And then I start saying, what if it all works out? what if everything's okay? What if I figure this out? And I use the tools to come back into the moment chase so that I can focus on what I need to do. And I'm telling you, if you're a small business owner and you are rattled and you are living with sustained stress, it's hand to hand combat with yourself in order to fight against the way that your body, your nervous system, your emotions can hijack you. And you can get control. And the more you use the tools that we're going to talk about, the faster and better you'll become at it. How your morning starts determines how your day goes. There's so much research about productivity and happiness. And so many of you are focused on what do I need to do? What do I need to do? How do I get more stuff done? And you get busier and busier and busier. And I want you to understand something. Being productive, being happy, being in control of your life It has nothing to do with when you get up. It has everything to do with how you get up. And so a routine refresh is something that you have to do. You have to do it because you must have a morning routine. If you don't have a morning routine, your entire day will get hijacked. If you don't have a morning routine, you're going to wake up behind, you're going to wake up stressed out, you're going to wake up and make a major mistake, which is you're going to let the world come into your brain and set your priorities before you even put yourself first. And so a routine refresh is critical. Even if you have a really profound and robust morning routine, it's always important for you to consider what works for you now. Because as your life changes, your routines need a reset. They need a refresh. They need an update. Okay. So today I'm taking a question from, and again, if you want this sucker, just go to mailrobs.com slash spring it on. Um, there's nothing to buy. We don't email you all the time. We send you an email once a week. And this is a program that you can do an experience that you can do at your leisure. 
on your own. You don't have to manage anything. We're gonna make it really easy for you. So the question today comes from Janine. How do I jumpstart my mornings in order to have a productive day? If I do get up early enough, I don't know what to do with my free time. And I end up starting something that I can't finish before I have to go to work and then I'm flustered for the entire day. How many of you feel that way? Maybe you get a little burst in the morning and then you're flustered because you can't finish it and then you feel like you've got something that's incomplete. How do I find a balance of getting the kids ready for school, making sure the house isn't a total disaster after breakfast, and then getting myself to work on with my day without feeling like a total nutcase? Hallelujah, sister. <laughs> I, there are certainly mornings that I feel that way and there are certainly mornings that you're gonna feel that way. So first things first about your routine refresh, super important to be realistic about where you are. If you're at a point in your life where you have little kids and the morning rush is the equivalent of what it might look like inside a warehouse facility where UPS is shipping packages out of and there's tons of things to manage and to locate and to organize and to get out the door in the right order at the right time, this might not be um, the time to take on running for an hour before the kids get out the door. You know what I'm saying? You need to be realistic. Can you get up a half an hour earlier? Of course you can, absolutely, and you should. If you're waking up into the chaos of the morning, the first thing I would recommend is go to bed a half an hour earlier, turn off Netflix, stop with the couple glasses of wine, and actually um, go to bed a half an hour earlier and wake up a half an hour earlier. And when you wake up, you're gonna get up, you're not gonna look at your phone, and what do you do during those first 30 minutes? Well, I have a morning routine that is backed by science. You can check it out at 5secondjournal.com. And I believe that we have, if you look at exercise number three, so day three, this is really, really good. Is this exercise three, day three? Um, yes, okay. If you look at page six, the melrobbins.com slash spring it on guide. This is super cool. I'm going to walk you through a couple super simple questions that will help you reset your morning routine. And one of the first things that you got to figure out, Janine, is how to boost your mood in the morning. This sounds so ridiculous, but it actually works. What do I mean by boost your mood? What I mean is when you wake up, one of the first things I want you to do after you've turned off the alarm, you've put your phone aside and you haven't looked at it, is I want you to assess your mood. How do you feel today? Are you energized or are you depleted? And if you turn the page from page six of your free guide, melrobbins.com slash spring it on, to page seven, you'll see this little gauge that I use, okay? I call it the fuel gauge because you run on energy. And your mood in the morning impacts how productive you are all day long. And so what I want you to do first things first, this says depleted, and then on the other side of the energy gauge is full. I want you to assess how you feel in the morning. Do you feel depleted? Do you feel meh? Do you feel okay? Do you feel full and energized? And I want you to do this because the first thing that you should do is figure out something that you can do to boost your mood a little bit. Now, what is that? You could go for a run, you could have a gratitude practice. You could take the dog for a walk. You could play music that uplifts you. You could um, figure out something you can do later in the day that you have to look forward to. Maybe you can sign up for that kickboxing class or maybe reach out to a friend and have a cup of coffee. Maybe um, you're going to get out of work a little early today and pick up one of your kids from school. Something that boosts your mood. And the reason why I want you to do this is because A, it makes you feel a little bit more in control. B, by boosting your mood, by having some to look forward to or playing some fun music or going outside for a quick walk, what happens is it impacts your your party. This is hard science and research. The other thing that I want you to do, and look, we also down here, if you don't know how to boost your mood, at the bottom of this free PDF, this awesome week workbook for week two, melrobbins.com, you'll see all kinds of research back ways that you raise your energy by having to go run on a treadmill, okay? So this is here for you for free. That's one of the things that you should do and that you can do. And um, I also give you some things here that I love that help me feel more energized. These are books that you can come to. One of the books, which has a little uh, essay, the two pages, yes, two pages, really you and 
even though you even though you can't get it out of your so you know you might have a conversation at work but when you ground yourself in boosting your energy and you ground yourself in feeling a little bit of gratitude okay like one of the things I heard somebody I had the other day and I can't do anything you know what I said I woke up that it was a great day that is I do it now, and it's had a profound impact on my life. So the, the second thing I know is some of the other live streams are super important. I want to imagine you. So you've woken up, you didn't look at your phone, you've done one thing to assess your mood, you figured out something you can do to boost it, feel a little more energized. Now pick one thing that matters to you today, and here's the thing. If you've got little kids, if you've got to get people out the door, if you want to, if it's important to you that the dishes that are from the um, morning, aren't left there when you get home, then don't start doing other stuff because you're setting yourself up to fail. Just pick one thing that you're going to work on today at some other point during the day and then let go and surrender into the morning. I find that so many times in my life, and I bet you feel the same way, one of the reasons why change doesn't work is because I'm not making the change work for my life. You know, I'm not being honest about the fact that I'm a single mom and I've got two kids and they're this big and we got to get them out the door and the hours between 5 in the morning and 7 a.m. feel like I'm running a marathon at 95 miles an hour. That is not the time frame that you are supposed to be taking on major changes in your life. That's the time frame where you're supposed to be present. You got to do what you need to do because this is the phase of life that you're in and you can manage your self-awareness and you can manage who you're being and how you're showing up during that 90 minute stress stretch period, okay? And if you do need the time for yourself, which I'm saying you do, you take it either right after you wake up, a half an hour before the madness starts, you're gonna have to get up earlier, or you take it right after you drop off the kids. And that's what I used to do when my kids were really little. I could not get myself organized first thing in the morning, so as soon as they dropped them off, I would sit in the school parking lot with my little day planner on my lap. And I would take 15 minutes before I commuted into work to plan my day, to think about what was important to me, and to figure out something that I could do that would make myself feel a little more energized. And typically, because of the constraint of having small kids and going to work and just having that 15 minute window, what that meant is it meant acknowledging that I had done a good job. I got my kids out of the house. I had actually gotten the dishes into the dishwasher. I had remembered the lunches. I had remembered the backpacks. I had dropped them off on time. Those were all wins, by the way. And acknowledging the wins in my morning became something that energized me every morning. And then I think, what's one thing I want to make sure I spend a little bit of time making progress on today? That's it. And I might find the time at lunch. I might find the time sitting in the car waiting for the kids to get done with soccer practice, whatever. That's how you make it work when you're in this phase of your life. And you're probably making yourself wrong for not being able to do more. And that's a major mistake that you got to stop right now. Hey, it's Mel. Thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed that video, by God, please subscribe because I don't want you to miss a thing. Thank you so much for being here. We've got so much amazing stuff coming. Thank you so much for sending this stuff to your friends and your family. I love you. We create these videos for you. So make sure you subscribe. Mwah.